Welcome to the Air Motor Project Spring 2020. In this video, we're going to go ahead and produce the piston. Now, looking at the piston's engineering drawing, we have some features we have to go ahead and manufacture into the part. So the features are the length of the part. We have to go ahead and get the 257 diameter hole drilled into the side of the part. We have to go ahead and get a 0.744 plus or minus one thou tolerance on the outside diameter across the whole outside diameter of the part. And then we have to produce a chamfer that's 30 thou by 45 degrees. So to do this, we generate a manufacturing routing. Looking at the manufacturing routing, you're going to see our first step is going to be to cut the part to a finished length using the cold saw. A cold saw will get you easily plus or minus 10 thou on your cuts. A bandsaw might be a little bit more iffy for that type of tolerance, depending on who's operating it. Then after we go ahead and we cut the part to the finished length, we're going to use a go-no-go -no -go gauge to go ahead and determine that the length is correct. Once we know that the length is correct during that operation, we're going to go ahead and drill a dowel pin hole. And we drill the dowel pin hole on a drill press. It's the cheapest way to manufacture a hole using a drill bit. And that hole size is going to be 0.257 plus or minus 5 thou. So when I look up on the drill chart, that uh, F drill is a 0.257 diameter. So that's the drill size we're going to use for that. Then we also have a go no go gauge to check to make sure we've manufactured the hole size within the limits. After we go ahead and we drill the hole, we go on to operation number 30, where we're going to grind the outside diameter to the finished size, the 0.744. Looking at the drawing, it's plus or minus one thou. Looking at the routing, there's a discrepancy plus or minus two thou. So we're going to go off what the engineering drawing tolerance is. There's a mistake here in this routing. Now, after we grind the outside diameter, we're going to go ahead and chamfer the outside edges, clean, inspect, and then place it in inventory there. So that's going to be the order of operations. Let's go do this. So looking at the operation sheet, for operation number 10, we're going to use the cold saw and a stop in order to set the appropriate length of cut on the saw. Now, the length of cut is 2.92. So looking at the different stops or different protrusions uh, coming off the stop, we have one that's labeled at 2.92 inches. So what we do is we loosen the Allen bolt to free up the stop. We align the 2.92 against the stop and then retighten the Allen bolt. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and put the material in the vise. To put the material in the vise, we simply use the clamp up front and we basically set the stock all the way up against the stop on the vise and then tighten the jaw there with, with the handle in front. Once the part is secure in the vise, we then have to select the appropriate speed on the saw. The cold saw actually has two different speeds. It has a high and a low speed. Because Delrin is a soft material, we're gonna go ahead and set the saw on speed number two. Now that we've set the speed on the saw, we can go ahead and check to see if coolant is flowing through the saw. If I gently squeeze the trigger on the top of the handle on the saw, I should see a flow of coolant coming out of the blade. Once I see the flow of coolant coming out of the blade, I can, while keeping the saw blade spinning by keeping your finger depressed on the trigger, you can pull the saw down all the way through the material, cutting it. Now, the saw should cut through the Delrin like butter because Delrin is basically an engineering plastic. It's not a metal. Once we've cut the part, we have to go ahead and double check in the go no go gauge that the parts within the limits. Notice that we have a snap gauge here labeled piston where the limits of size are on two steps on this gauge. You're going to see we have the we have the maximum amount of material and the least amount of material built into this gauge here. So when I slide it over the part, I should stop before I go to the least amount of material look, part of it. So the go section would be the maximum amount of material in this gauge. So if as long as it goes in to the first section and stops before it goes into the second section, we are good on the gauge. And looking at the video, you're going to see that the piston fits perfectly within that gauge. Now, after we, we cut it, we go on to the next operation. The next operation, operation number 20, drills the cross hole 
the 0.257 diameter in the piston. Now, in order to do this, we actually have a jig that became a fixture. So notice that the, the jig here in this operation has a drill bushing to guide the drill into the appropriate location. However, we had some students drop the jig one year on their foot, so we went ahead and we attached it to the drill press so it became a fixture and it just orients the, the tool in the right location. It no longer really uses that drill bushing to go ahead and guide it because it's, it's not free moving on, on the actual drill press. So we're gonna use the drill fixture in order to basically drill the hole into the part. Now, we wanna make sure before we use the drill press that the drill bit is tight in the chuck. We wanna go ahead and make sure that it's set at the appropriate speed, which is high for this operation. And we wanna go ahead and make sure we've got the right diameter of drill. So we kind of measure the diameter of the drill with our caliper. Once we understand that all of the elements are, in, are oriented and ready to go, we've got to go ahead and turn on, the vi or turn on the drill press and drill through our part. Now, be careful, because when you turn on the drill press, if it was to jam, you'd want to keep the quill in the, in the same position, even though nothing can lift up, and then turn off the drill press. As we drill through the part in one fluid motion, we're going to stop the drill press, lift the handle on the fixture, and then check the part with a go no go gauge to make sure we've manufactured the hole to the correct size so the red portion of the go no go gauge should not fit in the hole and the green portion should go into the hole now that we've determined that we've manufactured the part to the correct size we're going to go ahead and go on to operation number 30. our next operation operation number 30 is to centerless grind the piston to a 0.744 diameter plus or minus one thou this is a very tight tolerance, and we need to go ahead and machine the entire outside surface of the part, so we're gonna use a centerless grinder for this operation. Delrin is a very hard engineering plastic, therefore it can be centerless ground. Most engineering plastics wouldn't be able to be ground, you would gum up the wheel of the grinder. So to do this operation, we first need to go ahead and place the, the piston blank on the, the rest where it's gonna start being ground. We also need to turn on the grinder and make sure that the coolant is flowing fully on the blade. Next, we're gonna use the push rod to push the workpiece into the grinding wheel so it can start and self-feed through the grinder. Once it's ground the entire outside diameter, we're gonna turn off the machine and then grab our piston. In operation number 40, we're gonna use the LeBlond engine lathe to go ahead and put a 30 thou chamfer on both ends. To simplify this operation, we're going to use a collet chuck to hold the workpiece using a collet, a three-quarter inch collet, and then have a stop at the end of the collet so we don't actually have to adjust the, the saddle on the lathe. We can go ahead and just move the cross slide in and out in the same location every single time because the stock will be placed at the same stick-out length outside the collet chuck. So to do this, we first place the workpiece in the collet chuck. We then put the, the lathe in low gear and tighten the wheel on the outside of the, of the collet chuck in order to tighten the workpiece. This causes the, the collet to collapse concentrically around the diameter of the piston and hold it for machining. Now we take it out of red gear and put it back into blue gear and then we adjust the cross slide to zero. We bring in, we touch off the workpiece we turn on the lathe, and then we move the cross slide into 60 thousandths in order to make a 30 thou chamfer on the, on the workpiece there. When we're all done with the first chamfer, we stop the lathe, we flip the workpiece by putting it into low gear and loosening the collet chuck. We then line up the tool again and make another 30 thou chamfer by moving the cross slide into 60 thou. Then we remove the part from the collet chuck and double check that our chamfers look even as their cosmetic feature on the part. Now, we have got all of the different dimensions manufactured on this part. So it's time to go ahead and bring it to a first article inspection in order to make sure we manufactured all of the correct features within tolerance.